this is the pot pouch we made earlier in an earlier video. It's a jockstrap type type pouch. This is the body of the sport brief that we've been working on. About to sew in the pouch here. Now this you're going to do right sides together with the pouch lining up the center seams now what I do instead of so starting sewing at the waistband and walking this whole pouch through all the way to the other side in case there's any creeping at all it's going to cause it to be wonky by a little bit if you stretch it a little bit too much here not enough here so what I do is I start in the middle putting my fabrics right sides together seam right on top of the seam I've got my machine set up for the number three and then all the default settings for this the stitch I just leave as is I'm going to be using the same 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance that I use. I'm going to start at the center of the, the pouch. Here's the center seam of it. You can see it's got a center seam. That's where I've got my needle buried in right now. Right in the middle. Then I'm going to sew this edge in. Then I'm going to take the fabric out, put it back in, and then sew the other one up. That way, I know I can get this one lined up with the top of the waistband here. And same thing over there. Now I put my fabric in here, my needle's buried down. I'm going to do a little bit of a lock stitch. And then, if you. Bear with me, I'm going to move the camera over here so you can kind of give a better see of how I'm doing this sewing pouch. I know so much for production value here. So you get a slightly better idea of what I'm doing. In this pattern, I did leave enough room at the top of the waist. So if by the time I get heat the top of the pouch to the top of the waistband, if they don't line up exactly, I'm not that worried about it because I have about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch I can trim away one or the other. But I buried the needle right in the middle of the seam and I'm going to be sewing this one edge up. And it's a curve to a curve, so it's going to take a little bit of work to do. There's no sense in trying to pin this beforehand. What you want to do is just make sure it's nice and flat. Sew a little bit. Manipulate the fabric to line up the curves. You gotta move the bottom one a little bit, the top one a little bit, and then position them so it's going straight on the edge here. This is making a sewn in pouch. So the pouch will be similar to like a jock strap, not a, a banana like pouch on a regular boxer brief. Thank you. 
one side of it sewn in. And then I take it out. I'm gonna trim these fabric these threads out of my way. I'm going to turn the fabric over and then start in the middle again. This starting in the middle is how I do shirt collars also. versus starting at one edge of the collar and going all the way around. I start in the middle, go to the edge, middle, go to the edge. Just helps even out the fabrics. Follow the curve around, manipulating the fabric, getting it flat. And you're trying not to stretch either the top or the bottom, just manipulating them together. And then getting them as flat as possible, and then getting them in the machine. how you do the sew-in pouch and those with a good eye might notice I have this going in the wrong way this is the exterior of the garment here this is the interior exterior I have the pouch in wrong but I'm not going to take it out. What I'm going to do is just cover this seam here with a piece of black later. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to do this stitch here, the reverse cover stitch. What I'm going to do is just going to top stitch on the black, folding over the seams toward the black, using the same stitch that's in the machine now. And I'm going to do two rows. The first one about an eighth of an inch, and the second one about another eighth of an inch. And I've got about three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so it'll give me just enough to do the two rows of top stitching.
Yeah, it's not the first time I've sewn a part of a garment wrong side, wrong, right side, wrong side, inside, wrong side, outside. I've got a small case of dyslexia, so it happens now and then. Now I'm making sure when I'm sewing this that I'm pressing the all the seam allowances toward the black. And I think it's going to look good enough with just one row of top stitching, so I'm going to leave it at that. And just follow the curve around. Now with this apparel scuba knit, it's a fairly stable fabric, but has enough stretch that on these curves, you really don't need to clip them. If this was a cotton, definitely would have to clip the curves. But on this apparel sports knit, or spare apparel scuba knit, you can pretty much manipulate it when you're sewing it that you don't have to clip all the edges or all the curves. It's got a lot of fabric over the crossover seams here, so Get under there and manipulate it the best you can. And then sew a little bit slower over the crossover. crossover there's quite a few layers best to go a little slower Man manipulate out your fabrics And when you're doing the top stitching on the pouch here, you don't have to start in the middle. You could just go all the way around it because the construction seam is going to keep it where it's at. fingers aren't in the way. And I'm going to back the camera up view a little bit. And that's how you do this sewing pouch. This is the top.
top stitching with the reverse cover stitch look. Then this is the single row of top stitching around the pouch. And then this is the center point of the front of the crotch crossover seam. Like I said, I'm going to have to cover this over because that's the interior seam. This is the exterior. This is the exterior. This is the interior. Should have been on the inside. That's how you do the sewing pouch.